Hello everybody, Damascus the Fox here, and today I'm doing another review, and today I'll be reviewing this guy, this is the Boker. Lucas Burnley, Blaze Q exclusive, Stubby Quaken. Look at that. This guy is pretty neat. I got quite a few things to say about this knife. And first of all, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe if you like knife and EDC related content. I really would appreciate it. Now, let's get into the nitty gritty of this really nice looking knife. Length on this guy. <clears throat> uh, lately, I've been suffering from a um, cough and weird scratchy throat, so I will probably be coughing, going into coughing fits. Unless if today's the day I finally get cured, so hopefully. Okay. Uh, overall length on this guy is coming in just above, like, I would say, uh, five and a quarter. Somewhere around there. All right, and then blade length on this guy uh, coming in at uh, about a little over two, and the cutting edge is about two. So... Two inches of cutting edge. That's not too bad. Ha <laughs> ha, I make myself laugh. Okay, next. Weight on this guy. I'm assuming this guy's probably going to be like maybe two ounces, maybe two and a half ounces. Or on ounces. Boop. Oh, I was I was off. Um, 3.12 ounces. That's actually not bad at all. Uh, that's actually very light. So this guy is going to be uh, very light in your pocket, which is cool. Uh, size comparison on this guy. Let's do a size comparison. You guys like size comparisons, right? Uh, let's start off with the Spider-Co. Spider-Co. Pair three. Spider-Co. PM2. And Crew Rare. All right, so as you can see, this guy is definitely smaller than both of these guys by quite a bit. Next, CJRB Feltzbar. Full size CJRB Feltzbar. Small. Now, this guy, this stubby Quaken, is even smaller than the smallest Feltzbar. Uh, by quite a bit, actually. The, the blade length of the Feltzbar is... Pretty much the same size as the handle. <clears throat> and then next, Benchmade Bug Out and Benchmade Freak. Yep, so this guy's even smaller than the Bug Out. It's funny that I, I used to think that the Bug Out was too small of a knife. I was like, this knife is super small, but this is actually. <laughs> To me, one of the perfect uh, EDC size uh, knives. It's it's about uh, the blade length is almost uh, three and a quarter, so and that's my, one of my favorite blade lengths. So yeah. <clears throat> and last but not least, Cold Steel Spada Medium, Cold Steel Spada XL. Boom. And this guy is smaller than both of these guys by quite a bit. Who would have thought? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. all right, I'm done, I'm done with the size comparisons. I love doing <laughs> that silly size comparison. I hope you guys like it too. All right, do, do, do. Uh, now we're going to go with height. Height on this guy. All right, do, do. where? Where's my? There it is. Pair at three. PM2. Alright, so as you can see, this guy's definitely much more compact and smaller, so it's not gonna have much height. You don't have any blade sticking out of the handle. So up against that guy, you know, you got quite a bit of blade sticking out of the handle if you put it up against the felt bar. So as you can see, uh it's pretty much yeah. More Compact than the felt bar, bench made. So with that flipper tab, 
brings it to there, so it's pretty much the same uh, height as the um, bug out. Just bug out's just like a little bit taller. Doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, width. Uh, yeah, width. <clears throat> Let's do it up against the pair of three. So as you can see, this guy is just a tad bit thicker than the pair of three. Uh, let's do it this way so you can see the pocket clip. The pocket clip, the pocket clip is a little less, I would say, prominent on the Quaken, stubby Quaken. Yeah, this guy does bring up that height just quite a bit. Uh, this guy has, uh, I would say, a better pocket clip. Yeah, let's uh, show you up against the bug out. Bug out is very thin, so you can see that this guy do does keep its thickness. Blade thickness. Get my calibers. Okay, we are on. And we are zeroed. And let's go. Alright, on the thickest spot back here. Boom. We are at 0 0.12 inches on the back. And on the thinnest spot in the front, we are at 0. 07. All uh, right, down here on the blade, we are at 0 0.04. These are not really accurate measurements, but they're close enough. And the handle goes to 0 0.52 inches. So that's pretty cool. I thought I'll start doing the handle. I'm not sure if anyone really cares about that, but I don't know. It might be interesting to start uh, using the calibers on the handle. Price on this guy. This guy is titanium with S35VN steel. Uh, it's got uh, nice bearings and it's line and lock with the flipper. And the price on it, this guy will run you $99.95 on Blade HQ because it's a Blade HQ exclusive. Yeah. That's actually, I would say, a really good price for the materials you're getting, for the quality of this knife. And, I mean, it's a Locust Burnley's design, so, I mean, need I say more? Um, and it also comes in four uh, four different styles. Uh, one with, uh, uh, it was marble carbon fiber with a titanium bolster. And then there was just uh, brown micarta, I think, no, sorry, green micarta. Uh, the green micarta one will be uh, $89.95, so if titanium is not your thing and you like micarta more, you could save 10 bucks and go with the micarta. Then there's one with um, a copper, a copper, copper bolster with titanium. Uh, that's the same price as this one. Uh, now, this one and the copper one is out of stock the last time I checked, uh, but you never know. There might be more, so you know, just go look at the website. Keep an eye on that. But that's actually a really good value for what you're getting here, in, in my opinion. Uh, now let's do the cut test. <clears throat> uh, now uh, with it, disclaimer, as you can see, this guy has been well, well used, well loved. I like using this uh, knife, uh, so I had to resharpen this multiple times, so this is far from factory edge. Uh, but let's just see how well it held up from the last time I sharpened it and how much use I've uh, done to it. Not bad. I'm not uh, professional. I'm not a professional at sharpening. Still quite a novice, but I can get my knives sharp enough. And so the edge has held up pretty well. Uh, was not as pleased with the edge holding from the factory edge. Uh, it seemed to have dulled pretty pretty quickly. Uh, mind you, I was cutting pretty abrasive cardboard with this pretty aggressively. Um, yeah, so I mean that's a decent uh, edge, but the Boker's um, S35 uh, VN. Um, not sure if the heat treated it differently or whatnot. Uh, I need to do some more testing with S35 VN uh, because I'm just a regular EDC user. I don't really test my knife, so take you know my knowledge with a grain of salt. Uh, but S35 VN is a really good uh, steel, um, and I mean it's definitely going down on the on the tier uh, totem uh, you know on the tiers of 
really good steals, but it's still de it definitely worth uh, the money uh, on this guy. Uh, for 100 bucks. you can't really, comp uh, you can't complain about Esther 5 n It's still a really good steal. Um, <clears throat> but having said that, you know, it's, it didn't hold its edge as well as um, I thought it would. So I'm not sure if it maybe it was just because I was being really brutal to it, or maybe Boker did something with the heat treat, or... Uh, or just maybe just my, uh, that's just S35VN. Maybe it doesn't have as much edge holding as I initially thought. So, yeah. But otherwise, I sharpened it up, and it sharpened, took an edge really nice. And uh, it takes a gritty edge because, you know, it, it's it's got a lot of carbide in there. So it took, it was kind of a grittier uh, edge. So it definitely needs, you know, like re a really good, um, uh, you know, you definitely need to hone it and strop it uh, to get it really good. And I did. I used uh, my uh, Work Sharp uh, precision. Uh, was it adjust uh, sharpener? The uh, one where you take down the rod, uh, rod the tri-abrasive rod, and on it. Uh, it definitely got its edge really well. So yeah, I definitely liked uh, using this. Uh, now, okay, I did the cut test. Now, time for my personal opinions and just things I want to talk about this knife. One, um, disassembly, not the easiest thing. Definitely not horrible. Not like CRKT that strips all my uh, T6s. Uh, yeah, every time I work on a CRKT, I strip one of my T6 uh, bits, and it's really irritating. Uh, but this guy did not strip any of my bits, so I definitely like this guy for not stripping my bits. Uh, T6 suck. Um... I got this guy, uh, was it, um, the fit and finish on this guy was actually really good, besides, uh, the pocket clip being, uh, ajar, the, it wasn't flush right down there, uh, it was up a little bit, so it had a little lip that would constantly snag on my, uh, pocket, so all I did was just take off the pocket clip, take some needle nose pli pliers, pull it down a bit, and then push it up a bit, and now it's back to being flush, so, quick fix, not a big deal on the manufacturer's part, it, I can't complain for the price of this guy, I cannot complain. Um, I'm not going to complain. Uh, I like that the screws and the pod clip is recessed into the scales. I don't know why, but that's just it just makes me so happy to see that. I just love recessed screws and pocket clips. It's just nice. It, it just I like the flush look. It's it's just mm, love it. Uh, the construction on this guy is is actually not you know it's not too bad, but it will take you a while to disassemble it because there's a lot of parts. You got, you know, these uh, body, uh, two body screws, you got your pivot, you got, um, you know, the back spacer, you got the lanyard pin, uh, you got, um, uh, what was it, uh, two uh, ball bearings, and uh, you also have, I believe it was, if my memory serves me right, you have two more extra internal liner screws on the inside. So after you take off the scales, there will be two more uh, screws on the inside. So yeah, it does take a little while to take this guy apart and put it back together, but not really that big a deal compared to other uh, knives out there. Uh, taking this guy apart and working on it was not bad. It definitely, it definitely one of my better experiences when working on uh, knives. The centering on it is uh, good, a little to the uh, right, but not uh, that big of a deal. Uh, this guy is using, if you could see in there, not sure if you can see in there. My lighting is a little uh, wonky. Right there, not sure if you can see. It has a uh, the stop. The stop pin is uh, connected to the blade, so there's no stop pin back there. The blade has the stop uh, stop pin, so that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, not sure if you can see that, but the stop pin is um, in the blade, so that's pretty cool. And uh, it, uh, was it the flipper actually works really well. It's got this jimping right here. It's not upswept, so you know you definitely do have to be mindful on how you're flipping it. If you just do press, you're gonna you know hit the back of the tang and just do that. So if you just press it in, it's gonna be a little difficult. But otherwise, you just grip on it like this and flick it like that. Action on this guy is phenomenal. It's really good with those ball bearings. Uh, the detent is definitely tuned in very nice. Uh, so And you just push it down, and it goes right in. You don't have that stop that you get with some knives where the, you know, the flipper hits your thumb, and then you got to push it past that detent. It's really irritating uh, at, on some knives. And let's see, does it drop shut? Yep, 
drop shot action, which is really cool. Yeah, and this guy makes this really nice sound when it closes. I don't know what it is, but I really like the sound of it. It's just, yeah, it just, the detent just brings it in, and it just makes this really nice sound. I really like it, so that's really cool. And uh, let's see, you got your uh, end right there, the pocket clip. It's really a pretty good retention. goes in and out of the pocket really easily. It's very light, compact, very comfortable to use. Uh, it's not thin. They kept the same size, I believe, as the original. I, this is the only Quaken I have above what I've seen. I believe they kept the same handle size as the original Quaken. So if you're used to the handle size of the original Quaken, they did not shrink this one, uh, you know, width-wise. So it actually feels pretty comfortable. It doesn't have any troils, so you don't have much control on the, uh, you know, front side of the blade. So yeah, just keep that in mind. You have to go all the way back here, and it is a, it's not really a three finger carry. So if you got if I can't carry it and you got big hands, you're not going to be able to do three fin uh you're sorry you're going to have to do three finger carry. It's not going to be four finger uh, hold, and um, you might actually be slipping off with your third finger if your hands are bigger than mine. So yeah, keep that in mind. And the blade shape on this guy, <coughs> my apologies. The blade shape on this guy is basically, it's a straight back, which is really nice. You got this uh, really, the belly goes up really uh, early in, uh, in the blade, so you don't have that much straight cutting edge. Uh, but it's definitely very pointy, but it's definitely backed up by enough meat, so you don't have to worry too much about snapping off this tip. So just don't do anything uh, super crazy uh, with the tip. Just basic puncture tasks oh, <laughs> uh, and uh, was it it's, it's this is a flat grind with a satin finish so as you can see uh, past all my fingerprints and scratches it's a satin finish and yeah now the only thing I have to say about this uh, blade shape it's um, really nice uh, this blade shape does work a little bit better with a longer blade just in my opinion uh, it still uh, still works but for continuous long uh cuts uh with with there not being so much straight edge i tend to slip off uh more when i was cutting uh cardboard boxes so yeah just keep that in mind that if you're using this to cut uh, to you know cut up cardboard boxes that you will have to adjust uh quite a bit uh because you don't have much cutting edge but cutting uh you know just small short cut tasks this guy would do it great but long term uh cuts I tend to run out of cutting edge and it tends to slip off because you don't have much straight cutting edge. It goes, the belly just goes all the way up really early. So yeah, it tends to slip off. There's not much, you know, things to bite into things like the bug out right here. As comparison, you have a lot of cutting edge and it's a lot of straight cutting edge. So you know, when you're passing through materials, you're going like this. And the materials are going to stay within that track until you get up to here, and then that's when you're going to slip off, because that's when it, you know, it turns. So it, it will, it will, uh, you know, let go of biting into the material. But if you just adjust properly, sometimes I found going like this into a cut actually worked better with this knife than going like this, like most knives, because I tend to slip off. But um, it still works. Just have to adjust. A little bit more often but it's just nice to have something compact like this so yeah um, and I think that's really all I have to say it's got a nice swedge grind on it uh, the action on it is fantastic feels comfortable in the hand uh, the pocket clip works really well you get really good materials for the money and Lucas Burnley <laughs> um, got a nice backspacer so I think that's all I really have to say about this. I really like this knife. I really enjoy carrying it and using it. Uh, sharpening it was really, uh, really nice. It took an edge really quickly and uh, didn't take too long to sharpen it up. Uh, disassembly and reassembly was uh, long, but not uh, frustrating. And I will be doing a disassembly video on this guy uh, sometime in the future. So just to keep an eye out for that but yeah i definitely can recommend this knife uh there's four different versions so just uh go pick the version that you like and enjoy because this is actually a really nice little tiny teeny tiny quicken 
It's really cute. And I love it. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video. If you like more knife and EDC related content, check out my other videos. Remember to subscribe because I post every Saturday and every other Sunday. And there will be more knives and more videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. And have a fantastic day. Bye.